The pattern we're going to sew today is called Trade Winds. I have all my pieces sewn together and cut now, and we need to pick a background. We need to pick, get a really nice neutral background that these will show up nicely on, so we need the color expert for that, and that's my husband, Matt. He's over in the shop, so we're gonna take the pieces over and ask him for a suggestion. So I'm thinking one of these guys. Right on. So if we can try them out on it. Oh yeah, that's a, that's cool. We've done a few of those, haven't we? Yeah. You need back your background, nice tan color. Yeah, and I don't know if I want a yellowier one, but we can lay these pieces out. Like I was thinking, this one. Do we have anything over at the shop? Or is, it, is, is everything in here our plain cream ones? They're all here. here. You, you, okay, let me let's just throw out a couple here, Don, real quick. Okay. Look, some good light here and set those squares down on there. And we'll, we'll see what looks good. Sometimes you're surprised, you know. I know. You, you, you never know when you lay stuff down what, what you're going to see. It's a nice thing about seeing fabric in person, too. How's your morning going? Great, thank you. All right. What do you think? Well, I think I know which one I would pick, but what do you say? Um, yes, let me look for it. I think you have a good representation of what we're working with here. Yeah, I mean, there's they don't all have purple in them, but that's all right. I, I, I you know I get that's the whole deal. all the colors. Yeah. Um, well, I kind of like this one. Okay. You don't think that's a little too light and bright? I was thinking this might be softer, but... You could do that. You know, honestly, you could do any of them. Yeah, this one's too yellow to me. Yeah. So... I was afraid that this one was a little too yellow. Let's, let, let me move this up here. Okay. Yeah, go with this one. That's fine. I think it's a I little I don't think bit, it makes a difference. It doesn't make that much difference, yeah. but I think this is a little... Go with that brighter. one, though. I'd be happy with that one, too. All right, so I'm yeah, going to need you to cut the backgrounds. Can you cut the backgrounds? What size you need? I don't know, I have to look at the pattern. All right. All right. That'd be fine. Let's go over there and do it. All right. We've got our fabric prepared for the background here. So I have to cut some four and a half inch strips. So I've got one here. And so after we cut this all up into four and a half inch strips, we have to cut it into triangles. Okay, so we're going to do that with all our strips till we have enough pieces. I believe I need 36 of these guys. Then we'll take them over to the machine and stitch them onto our pieced triangles. I've got my triangles, the pieced ones and the background ones, and we're going to stitch one short edge together. Now you can see where the tip is cut off right here. But that won't matter because it's going to be in the seam allowance. So be sure to line this edge up and this edge up. And if everything wasn't perfectly cut like right here, it doesn't matter because we're going to be trimming these after they're stitched. So line up this edge and this edge very carefully. Use a quarter inch seam. And I'm going to chain piece all these together. So I'm going to leave them right on the machine and just go to the next piece. I always chain piece whenever I can. It saves a lot of time. You do have to be a little careful that you're not stretching the pieces because they are on the bias right now. So it will stretch, but we're going to iron it so that that will come back out. But try to be careful you don't stretch something here. So I've got all my pieces here. I like to iron it closed first even with a little steam right now because they can get distorted while you're sewing because there's still a lot of bias seams here. Now we're going to open this up. The seam allowance is going to be facing the solid piece. 
I'm going to open it up a little. Again, it is bias here, so you want to be careful not to stretch it, but you want to get this straight, not like that, not like that, nice and straight. If you're not sure if you have it straight, take it up to your ruler and just double check up there. So here's the ones we just ironed, the background pieces stitched to the two unit, strip unit, two strip unit. Now we're going to stitch this to the three strip unit. So we're going to take these two pieces, put them right sides together. I'm going to spin it around here. Now, these pieces don't always exactly match up. And that's okay because we're going to trim it when we're done sewing. But basically we want the seam here to line up with that point. So we're just kind of centering it there and we're getting this edge nice and even. But don't worry if you've got a little extra here, a little extra here, because we're going to trim off the excess. So make sure you're lined up here. Now is where you can see that little part that was snipped off earlier. This is why it doesn't matter. It's way, way in the seam allowance there. So while you want to be really careful with your sewing, if it's not perfect, and you put this on here and it, it doesn't match exactly, like this one doesn't match exactly, we're going to cut these off afterwards. They're not designed when we cut them out for the pieces to fit perfect. These are designed to be cut afterward. Then they will all be the same size. We have all the blocks sewn and we're ready to trim them. So take one at a time. Line up your strip tube ruler with the eight inch line on the stitching, not on the cut edge, on your stitching line. So we're gonna put this eight inch line right on our stitching line. And we're gonna line up the middle line here on the patchwork stitching line there. Then we're going to trim off everything extra. So when we trim this excess off, we now have a block that is exactly 8 inches and this seam heading right to the edge. I've got all these trimmed, ready to iron. So I'm going to iron it closed a little. Pull that open. It's basically just this one seam we have to iron here. There it is. Now all we have to do is put four of these together in a swirly trade wind kind of a pattern. And that'll make big blocks. And we're going to make nine big blocks. I just love the colors here. So you'll notice I wasn't really picky about what's going to go next to what. This particular strip set has a lot of colors and some of the blocks might end up with a fair amount of purple or a fair amount of green, but every strip was different. So I'm never going to get the same fabric right up next to itself. That would probably bother me if this was here and here. But I didn't have to worry about that because I had a strip set with 40 different strips. So that's never going to happen in this particular pattern. Now for the next step, we're going to take four of these. So we're just going to swirl this around. So now you're starting to see a nice trade winds pattern here. Um, now is when I would take a look at what was going in each block to see if I had a lot of repetition of color. But not real closely because remember these blocks are going to be mixed throughout. So I've got quite a bit of black in this one and not as much black here. So you could trade them around. But the idea is don't get really, really picky about it because we're going to have a lot to play with when we get these blocks all done. So here's my four blocks that are going to make one big block. We're just going to sew this together, this together, and then that long seam. So I'm going to turn this over here and this over here. If you want you can put a pin in so you remember what goes where. 
So this is going to get sewn first. So I'm going to match up these edges. We do want to be careful to match this seam with the seam on the back side. The seam allowances are going different ways, so it's pretty easy to feel if they're lined up. And I can feel it right there, so I'm gonna go right along here. Quarter inch again, always a quarter inch. Now we're gonna take the other set, which is gonna go here. Now, this matches right on the top here. So again, I'm matching that up. Having the dog ears on here actually helps me match it. I didn't trim those off yet. So I can feel they're lined up. So since we've got a lot of seams coming in here, I'm gonna have those seams, seam allowances go that way. Now, this is on a straight grain, this fabric right here. So you can finger press that hard and it won't stretch. This guy, we've got all these seam allowances coming in, so we're gonna do the seams that way. And you can see right here where our intersection is about a quarter inch up from here, same thing here. But I am gonna to wanna to cut off that excess there because it'll make a lot of bulk when we quilt the quilt. So you can use your scissors, you can trim these off ahead of time with your rotary cutter, but I've got strong snips there, so I'm just gonna trim that right there. Now I'm gonna put these right sides together, start at the corner here. Open it up and see how close we got. Ah, just about perfect. I finished all nine blocks and I've put the blocks together and I've put one little border around the edge and it's really looking very nice. So some people have a nice design wall. I have what we call a design floor. So I find it most useful to put this on the floor right next to my sewing machine and that way I can pick up my rows and sew them together and I get a big view of what the whole quilt looks like. So we've got the little border that it shows on the pattern here, but I've only got nine blocks. This size shows another half a row, which I left off. And I don't like square quilts, so we are going to put another border just on the top and bottom. So that's a bonus border that we're gonna work on here. That's not in the pattern, so we're gonna show you how we did that. Remember when we made the strip sets, and we cut them into triangles, we had this extra piece at the end of every row. So I've taken all those extra pieces and sewed them into one long piece here. I left this one off, but I just sewed these into a very long, jaggedy edge piece here. So I'm gonna fold this up and I'm gonna cut a couple of borders out of it. So I've got this long piece all folded up with the straightest edge here, and I'm just gonna cut it off straight with my rotary cutter here. All right, so the shortest piece is right here, but I can get two at two inches, so I'm gonna do a two inch border here. Now look how cool this is. So it's a pieced border, it's all diamonds. Here's my pieced borders, and here's the border I'm gonna put on the top and bottom of each one, and I'm gonna cut them all the exact length of the quilt. I'm gonna stick a couple of pins in because it is cut on the bias, and it might stretch. So let's match this up. Use a quarter inch seam. I've made my pieced border. You can see how awesome that's gonna look. And then I'm gonna put a purple border all the way around. Purple is one of my favorite colors. But this really frames it nicely, so the quilt is really shaping up nicely. I'm gonna sew these pieced borders on, sew the purple border on, then it'll be ready to go on the long arm.
Here's our finished quilt. It's finally done. It really turned out nice. I'm really, really happy with it. Here's our pieced border here with the purple on the outside. I used a meandering stitch called Calm Waters to quilt it with. So here, let, now you can get the whole effect here. So it's kind of a big throw size. I think it's 56 by 61, a little bit longer because we added those pieced borders. You can see the backing. I used another one of Hoffman's 1895 batiks on the back. So this is a great project. It really didn't take that many hours to make. You could probably make this whole quilt in a day. So thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah.